Hello and welcome to uh, Rudy's Electronics Labs. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to firmware upgrade a Rode and Swartz CMU 200 telecommunications tester. But first, I want to talk a little bit about, about these firmware updates. Um, because when I got mine, I started to ask myself, should I actually do a firmware update, try to do so. Um, so let's dig a little bit into that, uh, that, 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 that question first. So the latest firmware that is released for this device, I think is version 5.22, which was released probably somewhere in the year of, 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 of 2005. And as these things go, the new firmware uh, has a number of bug fixes in there over every uh, version. And sometimes a couple of new features are, are added. And most notably, there are a couple of features added between version 4.5 or so and the, uh, the latest version. Um, you'll find them in the, um, in the manual. Um, I'm showing you the page here. Uh, much more detailed information can be found in a text file that comes together with the uh, firmware update files. So for each of the modules, you got a, a file called release.txt and there you see all the firmware release notes for, for all the different versions that have been uh, released over time. Um, a couple of nice features did come in with the firmware, like, uh, uh, like, like attenuation correction tables, but honestly I think it's not terribly much that have changed over the, uh, the software version in terms of new uh, features. Now, what made me a little bit hesitant of doing these firmware changes is because this is an extremely complex device with tons of internal dependency between them. This is not like your regular measurement, test and measurement device where you got firmware running on a processor and maybe even some additional uh, file that will be, will be flashed to, a, to another unit like an FPGA that, that will be doing some stuff. Over here there are literally dozens of different systems running in here that all kind of have to align with each other. So there's a base version of the software and also of the, uh, the, the version manager. And then there's tons of software here for the microprocessors, for the DSPs, for the FPGAs. There are tons of tables, correction tables, and, 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 and whatever it is. And all needs to be properly aligned with each other to work properly together. Now, Rodi and Swartz worked on a way to, 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 to get us all working well, and we'll dig a little bit into that. Um, but I must say I find this a little bit of a nerve-breaking experience to go into firmware update. If anything goes wrong, uh, you don't want to think about that. And, and I've had much simpler measurement devices where actually the firmware updates did go wrong and got stuck somewhere halfway and I was afraid of ending up with a, with a brick or so. So doing it for a device with so many internal interdependencies um, and these especially come in when people might have changed, for example, a hardware cards of modules over time because they each have their own software running on it. Uh, so, so, so it makes it a little bit of exciting but also nerve-breaking uh, experience. Um, but nevertheless, we want to do it. We want to get these bug fixes and extra features. And we also want to learn a little bit from this process and, and share that learning here in the, in the video uh, today. Um, so I'm going to show you how I did the uh, firmware upgrade on, 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 on this device over, over here. Um, and actually there are a couple of different ways in which you can do that procedure. Um, you can do it uh, via the PCM um, CAA slot on, on the front side of the device um, or a floppy disk should you have a version with, uh, with a floppy disk. Um, or if you don't have the PCM CAA card, I think the floppy disk is going to be too small anyway for, for the full files. Um, if you don't have the, the PCM CAA drive, you can also do it via some computer utilities. Um, however, I didn't get those computer utilities running over uh, a regular serial bus, RS-232. Uh, um, I don't know what's going wrong there. I did multiple uh, attempts there. Uh, you might need actually the GBIP instrument connector to, to run it successfully. But anyway, when you got the PCM CAA slot uh, on it, then I would recommend to use that. That's the most straightforward way to get the files there and to do the, uh, the firmware update. So let's get started and, um, and see how that works. I want to demonstrate now how we can use the uh, version manager to, um, to check the firmware and update firmware. And to do that, we start up the device in the regular way. Uh, it starts up with the, with the BIOS. This is all successful. And by the time we get to the splash screen, and we hear the three beeps. 
We click the menu select button and we get into the version manager, which is version 5.12 right, uh, right here. And we see that the current overall uh, system software running on the device is version 4.35. Now, the version manager allows us basically to see what, uh, what software is running on it and also to install newer versions of the, um, of the software. So let's take a look what the current software on the device is. Um, and like I just said, the base version now is 4.35 and we see here the different versions that we got here for different software modules installed. The nice thing is that we can have multiple versions here, it's rather sophisticated, and we can choose which the activated version is. So we can also roll back to previous versions if that will be required. Yeah? Um, we might see that later if we update the software that we see multiple versions right over here. Um, other useful functions here basically is that we got a firmware update after board change because kind of all the modules got their own software running on it and that software needs to be in a compatible version with the overall system software and if you change the board you can basically reload new software to the board to work with that particular device. Um, there are a couple of other things, I'm not going to go through all of them, but we can do disk scanning which actually starts the, uh, the Microsoft uh, MS-DOS uh, disk check. Um, we can write things to a disk, uh, we can defragment the disk that might be re less relevant on SSD, um, etc. Now, now we're going to try to, uh, to install some, um, some new software um, using the, uh, the version manager. Now, I've prepared a set of uh, software updates there on this uh, little compact flash uh, card. Unfortunately, Roden and Swartz doesn't have them anymore available on their own website or via their glorious uh, account. But there are a couple of people who actually have posted them on the internet. So I'm going to use the internet. So I'm going to use the PCM CAA slot site. I'm going to enter it here, and I'm going to go install software. I'm going to scan my drives. Yeah, here we see the, uh, the drive in question. And here I basically see that I have a list of new things that I can be installing. I can install a new base version. I can install DSM, TDMA IS-136, Bluetooth. This is the free GPP, wideband CDMA and the CDMA 2000 of uh, of Qualcomm. So I first gonna go a um, first new uh, new base. Install as a new base. And there we go. It might take a moment. Preparing system. Haven't done this before, so I'm a little bit excited about it. It might take a while. Combining archives. Let's see what's happening here. We might speed it up a little bit in the video. Okay, so that was um, rather deep. We had a lot of things uh, going on. We got dozens of uh, flash memories that were, uh, were written to, that were written to and, and verified. We saw things about the, uh, the Motorola 68000 processor. We saw stuff going to, um, to I think, EEPROMs. That must have been the, uh, the flashing, the FPGAs, I think. But it is starting up. It is starting up with the um, Loading the options, this is the regular startup screen, so let me see where we are getting. Hey, look at that, it's running. See where we are, we see like all the different units here. Let's do a system info. Okay, that seems to be running fine. Yeah, looks looks good to um, to me. Let's start the uh, the spectrum analyzer. Oh, oh, I'm making a mistake here. Yeah, that's all starting up properly. Yeah, it seems that we're um, 
we're all good here. We can um, we can basically also go here to info and find the overall 5.21. Yeah, and this all looks good. Yeah, like it um, It looks like we did a successful um, update. Now the last thing I want to do is go back to the version manager and see that we see multiple versions there now in the, um, that we could select if we would like to roll back. I'm going back here. After the free beeps there basically should be. Oh, first we have to go through the, uh, There we go. Yeah, okay, so now actually we got a um, another menu item, item here, activate other version that was not there before. We can do list of software and we basically see there's a version here, which is 5.21, which is the active one right now with recent version of the software in there. And we actually do see here that there was a earlier version 4.33 that was there before I did the update and I could go back and activate that version if I wanted to or, or even delete it. So I'm not going to do that right now, but so we do see there's a possibility to, um, to roll back. So we successfully have carried out a, uh, a software uh, update. So that was it for today. Thanks for watching and I hope this video was, uh, was useful to you. And if you like it, do subscribe to my channel. I got a bunch more videos planned on the CMU, um, including the use of CMU as a, as a general purpose device, as spectrum analyzer, as signal generator, as power meter, and as audio analyzer. And of course, I've got also a number of, of things in mind for future episodes on other measurement, uh, test and measurement equipment. So hope to see you next time. Have a nice day.